Good morning, boys and girls. The first story I'm going to read today is called Calling Dr. Amelia Bedelia, and it's written by Herman Parrish, and the pictures are by Lynn Sweat. It was a hot day in August. Mr. Rogers was even hotter. Amelia Bedelia yelled, Mr. Rogers, what are you doing? What's wrong, said Amelia Bedelia. You said it was hot enough to... Stop, said Mr. Rogers. I said it was hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk, not on my car. Well, said Amelia Bedelia, you should be glad. I would never fry your eggs on a dirty old sidewalk. Forget about the eggs, said Mr. Rogers. You will be late for your appointment with Dr. Horton. Jump in the car. Yes, sir, said Amelia Bedelia. She bounced up and down on her seat. Sit still, said Mr. Rogers. Good, said Amelia Bedelia. It wasn't easy to jump in your car. Mr. Rogers shook his head. What kind of doctor is Dr. Horton, he asked. The very best kind, said Amelia Bedelia. She is a very good doctor. Of course, said Mr. Rogers. I mean, who does Dr. Horton treat? Everyone, said Amelia Bedelia, and she treats good boys and girls to ice cream. They arrived at Dr. Horton's office. Mr. Mr. Rogers took out a bottle. What, what are those pills? Asked Amelia Bedelia. They are for a headache, said Mr. Rogers. Why do you want a headache, asked, Medelia, asked Amelia Bedelia. I have a headache now, said Mr. Rogers. Then why do you want another one? asked Amelia Bedelia. I don't, said Mr. Rogers. In fact, I am getting rid of my biggest headache. Goodbye. Goodbye, said Amelia Bedelia. Thanks for the ride. I hope you feel better. Thank you, said Mr. Rogers. Call me when you are done. Amelia Bedelia opened the door to Dr. Horton's office. It was a lot noisier than usual. Amelia Bedelia, said Nurse Ames. You are a sight for sore eyes. How terrible, said Amelia Bedelia. I'm sorry that your eyes hurt. My eyes are fine said Nurse Ames, but I am up to my eyeballs in patience. Dr. Norton had to visit the hospital. Would you give me a hand until she gets back? No, said Amelia Bedelia, both my hands are attached to me, but I would be glad to help you. Right then, the telephone rang. Hello, this is Dr. Horton's office. This is Mrs. Bender, said a woman. I am calling because I've got hives. That's great, said Amelia Bedelia. I'll bet you have honey. Don't call me honey, said Mrs. Bender. Do you know what it means to have hives? I sure do, honey, said Amelia Bedelia. Stop calling me honey, said Mrs. Bender. I am coming down to see Dr. Horton right now. Good, said Amelia Bedelia. Please bring us some honey. Mrs. Bender hung up on her. Guess what, said Amelia Bedelia. Mrs. Bender is coming to see us. Oh my, said Nurse Ames. Mrs. Bender is a pain in the neck, but her heart's in the right place. Wow, said Amelia Bedelia. It would be terrible if her heart were down in her foot. This is April, said Miss a Nurse Ames. She's a little scared. Will you take her temperature? I will try, said Amelia Bedelia. Give it a shot, said Nurse Ames. A shot, wailed April. Don't worry, said Nurse Ames. Ames. It's just a thermometer. Amelia Bedelia, will you, will you please tell me the temperature in three minutes? <laughs> I don't have a watch, said Amelia Bedelia. Well, look out the window, said Nurse Ames. The bank across the street has a big clock. Bring. Amelia Bedelia was busier than ever. She answered call after call after call. I hear ringing in my ears. A ringing? Maybe you should answer the door. My nose hurts on the bridge. Well, get off that bridge. I've caught something of a bug. I hope you let it go. Bugs can bite, said Amelia Bedelia. Oh, Amelia Bedelia, said Nurse Ames. Don't forget about the temperature. She, Amelia Bedelia ran to the window. It says 98 degrees. Fine, said Nurse Ames. 98 is normal. Yes, said Amelia Bedelia. That is normal for August. For August, said Nurse Ames. Don't you mean April? Finally, uh, April smiled. A boy came in the office. Excuse me, he said. I'm here for a test. Then you must be lost, said Amelia Bedelia. You have to go to school to take a test. I am here for a blood test, said the boy. A blood test, asked Amelia Bedelia. What kind of crazy test is that? True or false? I wish it were, said the boy. Well, let's give it a try. True or false, do you have blood? True, he said, of course I have blood. Then you pass, said Amelia Bedelia. What if I didn't have blood? Asked the boy. Then you would pass out, said Amelia Bedelia. Hi, Andy, said Nurse Ames, we need to draw your blood. Amelia Bedelia, please take Andy to the examination room. Look at all this blank paper, said Amelia Bedelia. Why don't you draw your own blood? Amelia Bedelia gave Andy a big red pen. He began to draw. My mom told me, said Andy, that when you draw blood, I will feel a little stick. 
Amelia Bedelia looked all around. Here, she said. Feel this old ice cream stick. Those depress your tongue, said Andy. Right you are, said Amelia Bedelia. A stick without ice cream would depress anyone's tongue. That reminds me, said Amelia Bedelia. She made a phone call. As soon as she hung up, the phone ran again. Dr. Horton's office, said Amelia Bedelia. I have a problem, said a, a man. I am a little horse. A little horse? Huh, said Amelia Bedelia. You can't talk. You can't fool me. A pony can't talk. I have a, thro a frog in my throat, the man croaked. Yuck, said Amelia Bedelia. Spit it out. Listen to me, he said. I'm sick as a dog. Make up your mind, said Amelia Bedelia. Pony, dog, or frog? Maybe you should call a vet. I am coming down there, he said, and he hung up. The phone ran again, rang again. Dr. Horton's office, said Amelia Bedelia. Hello, my office, Doctor joked Dr. Horton. Hi, Dr. Horton, said Amelia Bedelia. I've been helping Nurse Ames. How nice of you, said Dr. Horton. So much has happened, but said Amelia Bedelia. But best of all, April is normal for August. April? August? What? Said Dr. Horton. And then I gave Andy a blood test, said Amelia Bedelia. You drew Andy's blood, asked Dr. Horton. No, said Amelia Bedelia. Andy drew his own blood. The table is covered with it. What? Are you treating my patients? shouted Dr. Horton. Not yet, said Amelia Bedelia, but I will soon. Don't tease me, said Dr. Horton. I am almost out of patience. Oh, no, you're not, said Amelia Bedelia. Your office is full of patients. I'll be right there, said Dr. Horton. The door burst open. Out of my way, yelled a woman. I am Mrs. Bender. Just look at my hives. How nice, said Amelia Bedelia. You came to bring us honey. But first, let's take care of that pain in your neck. Amelia Bedelia began to wrap Mrs. Bender in bandages, but she did not finish the job. All the patients Amelia Bedelia had upset on the phone stormed into the waiting room. Just then, Dr. Horton walked in. Calm down, said Dr. Horton. I will take care of everyone. They're saying, my throat, my stomach, my nose hurts. I've got ringing, I've got headaches. Dr. Horton looked at the crowd in her office. Who is first, she asked. Me, said the delivery man, the ice cream is starting to melt. What ice cream, said Dr. Horton. Your ice cream, said Amelia Bedelia. I told you I was treating your patients. Dr. Horton laughed. Good for you, she said. My patient, patients all deserve a treat. They were enjoying their ice cream when Mr. Rogers arrived. Amelia Bedelia, said Mr. Rogers, I was worried. Why didn't you call? I've been very busy, said Amelia Bedelia. Yes, said Dr. Horton, she was a huge help. And you must be Mr. Rogers. I'm pleased to meet you, said Mr. Rogers. Dr. Horton looked at Mr. Rogers and said, do you feel okay? You don't look very good. We know that, said Amelia Bedelia, but we have gotten used to him. Ha, say ah, uh, said Dr. Horton. Uh-oh, said Mr. Rogers. Not uh-oh, said Amelia Bedelia. Say ah, uh, like this, ah. Uh. Aha, said Dr. Horton, I knew it. Amelia Bedelia, take Mr. Rogers home and get him into bed. I am strong as an ox, said Mr. Rogers. Yes, dear, said Mrs. Rogers, and as stubborn as a mule with chicken pox. Speaking of chickens, said Amelia Bedelia, here is some homemade chicken soup. Yum, said Mr. Rogers. That hits the spot. Which spot, asked Amelia Bedelia. The big spot on your cheek or that little spot on your chin, or maybe the teeny tiny spot on enough, said Mr. Rogers. Okay, said Amelia Bedelia. I will go and wash those eggs off your car. Good idea, said Mr. Rogers. Put some wax on it too. Sure thing, said Amelia Bedelia. And Amelia Bedelia got a pail and got some water and she did not forget the wax. She put all those candles on and the wax dripped on the car. I bet you Mr. Rogers was not happy. Okay. This one is called All the Places to Love by Patricia McLaughlin. And it's, the illustrations are actually paintings and they were painted by a man named Mike Wimmer. Okay, here we go. She held me up in the open window, so that is what I first heard as the wind. What I saw first were all the places to love, the valley, the river falling down over rocks, the hilltop, where blueberries grow. 
My grandfather was painting the barn, and when he saw me, he cried. He carved my name, Eli, on a rafter beside his name and my grandmother's name, and the names of my papa and mama. Mama carried me on her shoulders before I could walk, through the meadows and hayfields. The cows watched us, and the sheep scattered. The dogs ran ahead, looking back with sly smiles. When the grass was high, only their tails showed. When I was older, Papa and I plowed the fields. Where else is soil so sweet, he said. Once Papa and I lay down in the fields, holding hands, and the birds surrounded us, raucous black grackles, red wings, crows in the dirt that swaggered like pirates. When we left, Papa put a handful of dirt in his pocket. I did too. My grandmother loved the river best of all the places to love. That sound like a whisper, she said, gathering in pools where trout flashed like jewels in the sunlight. Grandmother sailed little bark boats downriver to me with messages. I love you, Eli, one said. We jumped from rock to rock, across the river to where the woods began, where bunchberry grew under the pine needle path and trillium bloomed. Under the beech tree was a soft, rounded bed where a deer had slept. The bed was warm when I touched it. When spring rains came and the meadow turned to marsh, cattails stood like guards and killdeers called. Ducks nested by marsh marigolds and the old turtle, his shell was very worn. No matter how slow, he still surprised me. Sometimes we climbed to the place Mama loved best with our blueberry buckets and a chair for my grandmother, to the blueberry barren where no trees grew, to sky an arm's length away, where marsh hawks skimmed over the land and bears came to eat fruit, and wild turkeys left footprints for us to find, like messages. Where else, said Mama, can I see the sun rise on one side and the sun set on the other? My grandfather's barn is sweet smelling and dark and cool. Leather harnesses hang like paintings against the old wood, and hay dust floats like gold in the air. Grandfather once lived in the city, and he once lived by the sea, but the barn is the place he loves most. Where else, he says, can the soft sound of cows chewing make all the difference in the world? Today we wait, him sitting on a wood slat chair and me on the hay, until much later, my grandmother holds up a small bundle in the open window, wrapped in a blanket made from the wool of her sheep, and my grandfather cries. Together, we carve the name Sylvie in the rafter besides the names of grandfather and grandmother, and mama and papa, and me. My sister is born. Someday I might live in the city, someday I might live by the sea, but soon I will carry Sylvie on my shoulders through the fields. I will send her messages down river in small boats, and I will watch her at the top of the hill, trying to touch the sky. I will show her my favorite place, the marsh, where ducklings follow their mother like tiny tumbles of leaves. There he is, Eli with Sylvie, looking over the valley and the farm. All the places to love are here, I'll tell her no matter where you may live. Where else, I will say, does an old turtle crossing the path make all the difference in the world? There they go, the end. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you have a great afternoon and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon.